My parents were Salvation Army officers at the Mascot Corps in New South Wales when in 1921 uh, received an appointment to go along with 11 other officers to pioneer the work in China. I spent my first 18 years in China and together with my younger sister, we didn't begin to speak English until we were seven years of age. At 18 years of age, Wilbur left his family behind in China and moved back to Australia. While soldiering at Dulwich Hill Corps in Sydney and enjoying family life with his late wife Gladys, he never forgot his adopted homeland. My dear wife was very patient with me and after her fourth tour to China with me, she said, Will, isn't there any other countries we could visit for a change? The Chinese loved her. After retiring at 60, Wilbur believed God was calling him back to China to take on the legacy of his parents. Wilbur's initial contact in China was with Major Yin Hung Sheng. Major Yin was the last leader of the Salvation Army in China before its work and witness was prescribed in 1958. Through the efforts of Major Yin and Wilbur, China was unofficially reunited to the International Salvation Army. So in 1981, Wilbur arranged for a group of Salvationists to travel to China to contact Chinese officers. After two years of correspondence, the Dulwich Hill Band set out for their historic mission to China in 1987. Recognising Wilbur's and Major Yin's untiring efforts, General Eva Burroughs admitted them both the Order of the Founder at the 1990 International Congress in London. It gives me great pleasure to admit you to the Order of the Founder. Tragically though, Major Yin was knocked down by a car just weeks after his return to China. Following his death, Major Yin's son John took on his father's legacy and became the Chinese ambassador with Wilbur. In many ways, Wilbur's actions are like my father's, and after his death, I considered Wilbur to be my adopted father. Last October, Wilbur, along with John Yin, organised his seventh and perhaps final visit to his adopted homeland. The main reason for the visit was to see the former Chinese officers. Over the years, these Salvation Army saints have slowly been promoted to glory. We were able to visit them and put into their hands the equivalent of almost 12 months' income. We were also able to document the testimonies of these saints. And together, Wilbur and I captured on video a portion of history that for many years has been concealed to the world. As we walked the streets of China and met with former officers, I was amazed to see how much respect Wilbur had among the people. One of the highlights of our time in Beijing was being able to share in a banquet with the children of the former Salvation Army officers. Here we discovered that many of them would love to serve in the Salvation Army if it ever came back to China. I was soon made aware of the fruits of the past 20 years of Wilbur's labour, with many of these Chinese saints greeting him with tears of joy and treating him like the general. 
就是那时候就在就。We are so grateful that the Salvation Army in Australia hasn't forgotten us. 呃，教官。We have experienced many hard times for the name of the God and the Salvation Army over the past fifty years. Thank you for your continued prayers and the support. Everywhere we went, officers recounted their many trials and tribulations. My husband was strung up in the street, publicly humiliated, flogged, and had his teeth kicked out. Other officers lived in pig pens, later starving to death. Uniforms, photos, and anything to do with the Salvation Army was burned or confiscated. Many officers were physically and psychologically abused and have suffered since because of this. Oh, also drama. These were the toughest days of our lives. For many of us, all we had was our faith in Jesus Christ. However, every officer can praise God today for his faithfulness to him or her. I saw it as a privilege to suffer with my Lord. If it was good enough for Jesus Christ to suffer. It was good enough for me. God was moved by it. God was moved by it. God was moved by it. I said to the red guard, "Why do you do this to me? You are hunting my Lord, not me." They didn't realize that they couldn't break my spirit, even thought they broke my body. No matter who it was we spoke to, every former officer had a joy which could only be explained by having the Holy Spirit in their lives. Deemed a threat to the communists due to its origins in imperialistic Britain, the Salvation Army was banned in 1952. This old building in Beijing used to be the Chinese territorial headquarters. Over the years, the building has deteriorated. However, we were pleased to learn that the old army hall has been restored and turned into a concert hall. These are the first pictures inside the hall since its closure in 1952. It was one of the saddest days in history when the army left China. It was terrible. One minute we had our beloved army, then the next minute it was gone. However, the spirit of the army has never left, and over the years, officers have remained faithful to their calling. This captain started a church called Salvation Helmet to keep the denomination going. Today, at 88 years of age, he is the senior pastor of a congregation of 200, still preaching every week. Although the captain has lived a simple life with meager material possessions. He has come to learn that all he needs in life is Jesus Christ. I believe in Lord Jesus Christ and always pray to Him, even in times of persecution. Place after place, we heard horrific tales transformed into stories of grace and beauty as Christ entered the picture. <laughs> I was constantly reminded that this is the essence of the gospel. God's love for us is so great that He takes lives and circumstances which are filthy, weak, and broken, and by His love turns them into bold, joyful, effervescent reflections of grace. Without the love of God in my life, I would have given up years ago. I love God and the Salvation Army. I asked one of the officers, "Would you like to see the Salvation Army back in China?" And she replied, "What a stupid question! We have been praying for 50 years for the return of our beloved Salvation Army." I hope and pray that by 2008 or before the China Olympic Games, China will open to Christianity. 
I believe this will happen, for God answers prayer. China is transforming at a rapid pace in preparation for the 2008 Olympic Games. As China prepares to showcase its country to the world, we pray that their hearts and minds will also be prepared for what God has in store for this Oriental army. All my days and all my all, all my will and all my power, all the passion of my love shall be thy dear Lord, shall be thy dear 